Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at drawing walls, native tools, inside of SketchUp. So I know lots of you guys already have your own method for drawing walls, and that's cool. I'm not here to tell you that you're doing anything wrong. But anytime we get into any architectural modeling skill builders, um, like importing plans for reference or pulling in DWGs or something like that, somebody always says, well, now how do I go about drawing the walls? Uh, it, it happens every time. So I figured we'll do a quick video here and just talk about a couple things you want to keep in mind when you're creating walls and a couple options of ways you could create your walls. This is not meant to be exhaustive. This is not every single way you could possibly create a wall in SketchUp because there's probably as many of those as there are users out there. But uh, this is a handful of ways that I've used in the past and are worth exploring if you're new to SketchUp and drawing walls. So let's hop in. Okay, first thing I wanna talk about is drawing exterior walls around a footprint. So I have just this super, just a simple shape, right? So this is just, uh, it's a group right now. It's the outside, this potentially, man, I don't know, patio home or something, this little, little building. And this is the shape of the floor that I wanna put walls on. So first thing I wanna talk about is creating exterior walls around a separate uh, a group of, of a floor. So first thing, before we even dive into that, I wanna point your attention over here to tags. So in tags, um, I've already created a handful of tags. So I have a floor, I have a walls exterior, walls interior. Again, so many different ways you could break your model down into different tags. The important part, what you wanna make sure you do, is have a way to differentiate anything you're gonna work with differently, print out differently, want to visualize separately, any of that is gonna mean a different tag. So this is pretty basic. I have floors, exterior walls, and interior walls. You may want like, uh, you know, first floor, second floor, third floor, uh, walls by width. So my six inch walls versus my four inch walls versus my block walls versus framed walls. However you need to break it down, set those up ahead of time because then as you create each one, you can really quickly apply them to the, the tag they're supposed to go on. All right, so right here, when I have a footprint like this that I want to trace, so there's a couple ways I do this, right? Of course, I could come in here with my just regular old uh, line tool. So I can come grab lines and I could just go click, 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 click and trace all the way around here and get a footprint. But what I'm gonna do is, and this is obviously a simple shape, but I'm gonna do this quicker. I'm gonna double click to enter and select the surface of the top. I'm gonna say edit, copy. Now I'm gonna exit that group by clicking outside and I'm gonna say edit, paste in place. So that takes that surface and puts it exactly where it was, but outside the group. Now to get walls around here, all I have to do is grab offset and pull the offset, the width of the walls. Now, right here, we're gonna hit some, some differing mentalities or, or ways to do this. The width of the wall you draw right here is the width of the wall you want to see in SketchUp. That simple. So if my concern is the framing in here, and it's gonna be a two by six wall, I'll offset this 5.5 inches and model from there. If what you need to see for your purposes is the full finished wall width, I wanna see from outside of siding to inside of drywall on the inside, then you might be putting seven and a half inches in here. You might be putting, I, I don't know exactly, I'm not gonna tell you what it's gonna be, but you're gonna set this offset to the width of wall that you need to see in your model. So I'm gonna go personally with framing width. So I'm gonna say this is supposed to be 5.5, hit enter, and there I have my wall widths of five and a half. Now I can go uh, push pull, so I can just say, all right, kind of push pull, come to this exterior, pull that up, tell it exactly how high it's gonna be. I uh, will say nine foot and there's my exterior walls. I do have a surface here, so I'm gonna hit select, pick this extra surface right here and delete it. Now I can triple click on one exterior wall, right click, make a group, and then I can take that and I can say entity info, apply that to my wall's exterior. That just makes it enough. I need to get to the floor. I want to get the floor out of the way. Super easy, quick way to do it. So this gives me one group that is all of my exterior walls. This is not the only way to do it. Um, and I'm, I know I'm saying that a lot, but I don't want anybody to think that, that this is limited. There's different ways to do this. So this is one way and a quick and easy way just to get those exterior walls in and get them some thickness. So let's, let's pan over real quick. Let's take a look at this section right here. 
So over here, I have another footprint of a house with some interior walls. So there's a very different way you can go about tracing walls. So this is a group again. Um, this is currently untagged. Let's, this should be on floor. Let's put it on floor. Boom, now it's on floor. All right, so let's talk about how we could also go about um, tracing this right here. Somebody asked me in a comment why I don't prefer to work from like DWGs or imported files, why I would prefer to import those kind of files as reference images and trace them. And the, the, the answer is pretty simple. It's, it's for control purposes. If I just pull in a bunch of lines and trace them, I don't actually know if they're correct. I don't know if the lines are in the right spot. I don't know if walls are the right thickness. If I just trust and trace whatever's on the screen and I'm responsible for the design, then that's on me if there's a mistake in the file. Um, if it's my design, then I wanna make sure that I'm reviewing and putting in the correct dimensions as I go. So to that end, let's talk about what we wanna do here. So one thing I can do is with these exterior walls, I'm gonna say that um, maybe I'm designing for, I wanna actually create these walls. So these walls, I'm gonna look at framing or something like that. So when I draw these walls in, I want each wall to be a separate piece rather than this monolithic exterior set over here. To do that, what I'll do is I'll grab a rectangle and I'll go from the outside corner here to the inside corner here and then use push pull to pull that up to the height. So I'm just gonna stick with nine feet. There we go. And now I can triple click, make that a new group. And then I can just proceed around creating that same wall set like this, inference that over and then push pull that up. I can inference here, triple click, make group. Um, so you can see here, I am overlapping my walls. Again, not the way you have to do it. I'm, I'm just overlapping clockwise as I go around. Um, if you have a different way you like to have your frame walls, if the north-south walls run through and the east-west walls run short, that's cool too, however you wanna do it. But what this is gonna do is this is gonna give you a different group for each wall. So if I do wanna come in here and add the framing, I, this becomes my envelope for that framing and I can add it on top of that. Once those are all in, of course, that's where I can do just quick group select and put those all on the exterior wall. So now again, now I have each of these is their own piece. I did not make them components, you guys notice that. The reason I wouldn't wanna make these components is I'm assuming once I start putting in windows and doors and intersecting walls, each of these walls is gonna be framed a little bit differently. So I personally don't have a reason to reuse this. Now, there's exceptions to that, of course. If this was a, say this was a hotel or a, a apartment building where the same thing repeated one, two, three floors high, then you might wanna start with components. Eventually, even in a case like that, you're gonna to wanna to probably break it apart potentially because if I'm doing something like getting my materials from this, then the materials for the, the second floor are gonna be separate from the third floor, even if they're the same cut lengths and everything, they're going in different spots. So, But that's again, details you can iron out. All right, let's look at putting some interior walls in. Again, with interior walls, there is many different ways you can go about this. I'm gonna carry on with this idea that I want these walls to all be separate. So uh, let's talk about this wall right here. So what I would probably do a lot of times to check lengths, make sure everything is correct, is probably do something like this. So I'll come in here, uh, grab a rectangle, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this up the wall. So I'm gonna reference or inference this right here, pull it straight up and then check my dimensions down the bottom. So it says six inches by nine inches. And then if that's good, I can put it there. If it's not good, so if this is actually supposed to be like a four inch wall, then that's where I can correct it. So I could say, oh, no, four inches by nine foot. And that'll give me, oops, I put four foot. <laughs> so also not correct. Let's try that one last time. Four inches by nine foot. That gives me the proper length. And this is what I was saying, if I know that's not supposed to be a six inch wall, I could actually make that change right there. So at that point, I could pull that through and I pull that to the length right here. And again, here's where I would go check. Okay, right now on my, my model I'm referencing, the image I'm referencing, it says that's 18 foot eight and three quarters. Oh, it's supposed to be 18 foot nine. So I put 18 foot nine in, and now I get that wall at the correct length. So I can kind of carry through like this 
making these uh, walls, putting these walls in here. Um, so I could say nine foot comma four inches, get that where it's supposed to be, and then pull that through to wherever. Um, and this, oops, I want to make that into a group first. Get that extra line. And then I can work my way through here. Like I said, in this case, I would just be constantly checking the dimensions against the plan to make sure they're correct. And then as each one's in there, make it into a group. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and throw one more rectangle on here. Oops, I did not. That was not good. <laughs> All right, let's start here. And four inches, comma, nine inches, nine foot. And then I can just pull that again over here. For some reason, I drew that inside out. Let's go ahead and reverse the faces and make that a group too. All right, so talking about from here, I got some extra lines there. Um, let's talk about a little bit of editing here. So if I have a monolithic shape like this and I want to make changes to it, so if this wall's a thicker or thinner wall, I can use push-pull to move one side or the other. If I want to actually move the location of the wall, I can do a select, grab it like that, move, and then I can make that change. Um, again, I'm pushing around the full envelope of the exterior walls. In this case, if I have a wall I need to move, I can select it, move it, and then just slide it. From there, if I need to have this one run into it, I just double-click, push-pull, and pull that wall over there. I would recommend opening and using push-pull because if I had a window inside this wall and I use like scale instead, so say, let's, uh, let's, let's do this. Let's grab this one and move here, right? So if I look at, close that back up. If I push-pull that over to here, that looks great, but if, I have something like a, a door right here. Say that there's a door right here. If I use push-pull on the outside, that works awesome, right? If I come to the outside, and this is a temp temptation you might have, is to grab this and just use scale, because it's nice, I hit scale, I have this, this, ha or this handle I can pull right over there. Look how easy that is. But look, my, my shape of my door changes then. So just as a rule of thumb, it's a better idea to double click, push pull, and just drag that to where it needs to be rather than using scale. Same thing here, push pull, we'll just drag that right back there. And there we go. And then again, just to keep things organized, I probably want to grab these three walls and put them on the interior. And that way, again, I can just start flipping things on and off. Super easy, super organized. And this way, each wall has its own name. I could actually come in here and go to instance name and name the wall, give it a wall number, whatever I need. Um, and each one has its own properties. So if I'm aiming to get information or framing or whatever data out about individual walls, this is a great way to do it. If I'm looking just for a mass to, to represent the exterior interior walls, then tracing a 2D shape on the ground pulling up works really well also. So again, not comprehensive. I didn't hit everything you could do. We didn't even talk about extensions. It was native tools. You have profile builder, something like that. It's going to make it a lot easier to make walls and just trace lines. That's awesome. This was just using native. This is a couple options for how you could input walls um, into SketchUp once you've got your reference in there. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts, though. If you have another way that's worth exploring, let's hear about it. Tell me in the comments. And if you like this video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, please do leave us a comment down below. Like I said, you got a different way of putting in walls? Tell us all about it. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.